Hello everybody, this is Niklas Hoschmidt and today I would like to do an opening tutorial about the Open Sicilian, the Sicilian Defense. So we're going to take a look at different Sicilian openings through just an overview and in later videos we can go into depth into all of the different Sicilians there are because there are, as we'll see, a lot. But first of all, let me read out to you the comment of the day and it is by 6843518 and he says openings a good man for every game has one that's right so in every game you have to deal with the opening and you have to make sure you get out well then he goes on to say also changing the board style once in a while would help make things fresh like you do in the thumbnails so thanks for the feedback and that's a question for you guys what do you think about the board style I have in my videos I really like this design by Chess24 so I like to use it but of course we could also experiment with other styles as for example from chess base. So let me know in the comments and thanks to you 684 for commenting this and also I see that you put a lot of other comments as well so that's that's really cool. All right, so this is the, the open Sicilian 1 e4 and now why wants to play d4 in the next move? Why wants to occupy the center? This is always the goal in the beginning of the game to occupy the center so you have more space for your pieces. Black has different ways to react to this and one way is to play c5 and now we already call this the Sicilian defense. Because now if white goes d4, which he can, then black can take. And now what he has done, he has exchanged a pawn, the c-pawn, against the center pawn. So this is actually a, a kind of favorable exchange for black. And another problem would be here that if white takes black with the queen, there's another kind of rule of thumb in the opening. You don't want to move your queen too early. You want to develop your other pieces first. Why? Because if you move your queen too early, like here, then black can bring out his pieces with tempo. Develop the knight to c6 and attack the queen. You have to move the queen again. You cannot move the other pieces and you lose time. In the opening, there are three golden rules. First, occupy the center. This is what we see here already, the opening struggle in the first moves. The second rule is to develop your minor pieces. So those are the minor pieces, knight and bishop. And the third rule is to bring your king into safety. And it usually means castling, short or long. However, in most openings you'll see that the short castle is played. Alright, so knight f3. And now black already has a range of moves available. Let's just start with d6. And I want to talk about the open Sicilian here. And I'll tell you in a moment what the open Sicilian is. Here white can also play a move like bishop b5 check or knight c3. There are many, many moves. And we can get to those moves maybe in another video. But today we want to talk about the open Sicilian, which is d4. And this position in general is classified as the open Sicilian after white has played d4 because he has opened up the game in the center. Now black goes knight f6. <clears throat> this is a useful move because if black plays another move, let's say a6, something else, then white can develop a better grip on the, on the center by going c4 and it is more difficult for black in the future to play his typical break with d5. This is, by the way, called the Marocci bind with the pawns on e4 and c4. Very nice grip on the center and white has a nice control and he has more space. This is why black goes knight f6 and here white needs to defend his pawn e4, it's attacked. So white plays knight c3. This is the most natural move. Of course there are other ways to do defend this move. f3 is the sideline, but knight c3 is the most natural. Also, you might notice in many, many openings, the knights are best placed on f6, c6, c3 and f3. Why is that? Well, for one, the knight is defending the pawn on e4. But he would do the same on d2, right? Well, for the other, he's also having an eye on d5. So he's having the center control, perfect center control of the squares e4 and d5. So now I'm just going to briefly mention different openings that different Sicilian variations that can arise in this position. So there's a dragon where black goes g6 and plays the fianchetto with the bishop. And this is a very sharp line 
where we have opposite castles like this and then what is typically the situation in these kind of scenarios is that both both sides try to attack. So white tries to push here and get a mating attack going, whereas black will play on the half open C file against the white king and it gets very sharp. This is a typical, you see this very often, the Sicilian, these opposite castles, and as a result, the Sicilian is one of the sharpest chess openings there is because opposite castles naturally lead to such situations where both sides try to checkmate each other. All right, that's a little bit too far back. Then there's the Richter Rause variation here where black goes knight to c6. Or it's a classical Sicilian, I think it's also called only after bishop g5, which is the main attempt usually what white does here. This is called the Richter Rause. And also here, white often prepares queenside castle. Of course, instead of bishop g5, he has other moves available, bishop c4, bishop e2. In all of these lines, white has many, many ways to play this for sure. There's the Schevening variation, e6, which just keeps options open. And once again, well, there's different ways to develop here, bishop e3, bishop e2, or my personal favorite, the Karras attack going g4 and g5, which is a very standard attacking idea in the Sicilian to push these pawns forward to eventually open up the position in front of the black king. And then my all-time favorite, of course, the knight of variation, a6. And you might wonder why a6? Well, it's kind of a useful waiting move because in many Sicilians you want to play a6 anyway to support b5 later on. And as you see now, you're not allowing this g4 move because you can just take. And what's nice about this compared to the classical Sicilian where black develops the knight to c6 is that black stays flexible. Often, actually, he develops the knight to d7 instead. And from here on, of course, can also go once again in all kinds of directions. Bishop g5, bishop e3. White has so many tries available. And we'll talk about this in a separate video just for the knight of Sicil. So let me see if I have forgot anything in this position. No, I don't think so. Of course, there's some side moves here. But those are the main, main Sicilian lines that can arise here. But we need to go back because there's more. Of course, here in the second move, black doesn't have to go d6. He can also play knight c6, for example. Now, again, we get the open Sicilian, white goes d4. And here, black again has some choices. He can go for the accelerated dragon. So this is kind of similar to a dragon we saw earlier. Black goes g6. And white can play knight c3 now, but here he also has the additional option to to install this Marachi bind I was talking about earlier, where white gets a really good grip on the center and it's not easy for black to break through and free himself later on. Also in this position, there's the Kalashnikov variation, which goes e5, and then white brings the knight to b5. And those are quite different positions than what you see in most of the Sicilians, because black has already Black has already committed to e5, and that means this square on d5 will be weak for a long time. And also this pawn on d6 will be a weakness which has to be defended by the black pieces. Similar to the Kalashnikov variation is the Sveshnikov variation, where black first goes knight f6, knight c3, and now goes e5. And once again we have this, black pushes the... Black pushes the knight back here. This is one typical line just to show you real quick. And we get something like this, where white has a very nice knight on d5. But on the other hand, black has the two bishops and his position is very solid. This is known as one of the most solid Sicilians there is. Let's go back once again here. And I think that's all I want to say about knight c6. And then there's one other big move here in this position, which is e6. And then after d4, c takes d4, knight takes c4, again, black has different options available. There are two really that need to be named here. The can variation, which goes a6, and white can play with knight c3 or bishop d3. And black 
will play something like this queen c7 of course again there are many different ways to play but again here white can install this marochi bind and besides the can of course there are also many more silence here bishop c5 knight c6 all these moves exist and we'll go into more detail when we talk about the can variation specifically or in german it's also known as the paulsen variation and there's also knight c6 here knight c3 so of course black could have also started with knight c6 and now there's the time of variation there's also the four knights variation here knight f6 once again something else where white plays knight db5 you see it's so many so many lines and i can't even include them all but let me just say something about the time of variation which is queen to c7 the queen is often well placed on c7 because already in your half open c file the queen can take on c6 if the knight is taken and so on and here once again white has to make a choice does he want to castle queenside by playing maybe queen f3 here, maybe playing queen d2, preparing queenside castle, or does he rather want to develop his light square bishop and castle short side? That's really a matter of style because both options are completely possible and you have to decide if you want to have it really sharp, then you play with queenside castle because like I said, then you often get these opposite castle positions where both sides try to attack, or you want to keep it more quiet, then you play a position where the kings are on the same side of the board and that means it's not so easy to attack the king without weakening your own king too much yourself. All right, I think this covers the main Sicilian variations in the open Sicilian or otherwise you guys can let me know if I forgot one and then in the future videos we can go into more detail of all the individual ones it would be just way too much to talk about in this video. So let me know if you have any questions, if there's anything clear, if this was anything unclear. <laughs> and you can also write me what is your favorite Sicilian of all of these. Which one have you played yourself so far? And then I'll see you next time. Bye bye.